to the District of Columbia. The winter is over. Change is here. The sun shines on a new day, and the day is ours. For the fir first time, voters show up 18% of the time in midterm elections. Not anymore. Now, who here is going to vote in the 2018 election? If you listen real close, you can hear the people in power shaking. They've gotten used to being protective of their position, chewing safety, the safety of inaction. Inaction is no longer safe, and to that we say, no more. 96 people, 96 people die every day from guns in our country, yet most representatives have no public stance on guns. And to that, we say no more. We are going to make this the voting issue. We are going to make, take this to every election, to every state and every city. We are going to make sure the best people get in our elections to run, not as politicians, but as Americans. Because this, this is not cutting it. When people try to suppress your vote, and there are people who stand against you because you are too young, we say no more. When politicians say that your voice doesn't matter because the NRA owns them, we say no more. When politicians send their thoughts and prayers with no action, we say no more. And to those politicians supported by the NRA that allow the continued slaughter of our children and our future, I say get your resumes ready. Today is the beginning of spring, and tomorrow is the beginning of democracy. Now is the time to come together, not as Democrats, not as Republicans, but as Americans. Americans of the same flesh and blood that care about one thing and one thing only, and that's the future of this country and the children that are going to lead it. Now, they will try to separate us in demographics. They will try to separate us by religion, race, congressional district, and class. They will fail. We will come together. We will get rid of these public servants that only serve the gun lobby. And we will save lives. You are those heroes. <laughs> Lastly, let's put the USA over the NRA. This is the start of the spring and the blossoming of our democracy. So let's take this to our local legislators. And let's take this to midterm elections, because without the persistent heat, without the persistence of voters and Americans everywhere getting out to every election, democracy will not flourish, but it can and it will. So I say to those politicians that say change will not come, I say we will not stop until every man, every woman, every child, and every American can live without fear of gun violence. And to that I say, no more. Thank you, I love you all. God bless all of you and God bless America. We can and we will change the world. Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. Tomorrow, thousands of activists will descend on Washington to demand that you be punished for crimes that others committed. It's called the March for Our Lives, and it's designed to lobby for new gun control legislation across the country. The event is backed by wealthy and powerful people, billionaire Michael Bloomberg, former mayor of New York, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo, many others. Some of what they're calling for is unconstitutional and irrational. It cannot work, it won't work, and that's why it's not already the law. It's not just NRA lobbying, it's common sense. But the organizers would rather not get into all those details, and they certainly don't want to have all those debates, and that's why they're hiding behind the victims of the latest horrific school shooting. The kids are front and center by design. 
handful of teens from Stoneman Douglas High School in Florida. Now, they have a right to their views, obviously. That is a given. This is one of the rare shows that supports the rights of people we disagree with to talk. But the rest of us also have rights, including the right to assess what they're saying and decide whether it ought to become law to which we are subject. These are not religious figures. We're not the faithful. We're all citizens here. So let's take a look at what they're saying and decide if it's a good idea or not. For example, here's David Hogg. He's a Stoneman Douglas student. You may have seen him on television. He's dutifully trotted out by the media as a gun expert. Here's part of his take. The way Rick Scott has been talking about it is like, when the shooter arrives, we need a metal detector it, it, and a guard. Point, with Rick Scott, it's like, when I get elected to Senate, we're not going <laughs> to let that <laughs> happen. What sick <laughs> are out there that want to continue to sell more guns, murder more children, and honestly just get reelected? What type of person are you when you want to see more <laughs> money than children's lives? How, what type of <laughs> person does that? We have to use our white privilege now to make sure that all of the voices that have, all of the people that have died as a result of this and haven't been covered the same can now be heard. Sell more guns, murder more children, and get reelected. That is David Hogg's view of the other side of the debate. Emma Gonzalez, meanwhile, another celebrated survivor of the shooting, basically agrees with that. She recently said in a speech, quote, I don't really care what people who defend the Second Amendment have to say. Let's take this seriously. We should take it seriously because it's serious. If you honestly don't care what the people who disagree with you think, if you believe they want to, quote, murder more children, then who are you? Well, you're angry. You're definitely not fit to be making policy for the rest of us. You are, by definition, an extremist. You should not have power if you really believe anyone who disagrees with you is evil and wants to kill the innocent. Maybe a journalist could point that out, but no. Journalists agree with Emma Gonzalez and David Hogg, so they've slapped them on the cover of Time magazine and declared that they're heroes and you're not allowed to disagree with them. Here's more David Hogg from earlier today, by the way, explaining that the Bill of Rights matters when it applies to what he can wear to school. Watch. After we come back from spring break, they're requiring all of us to have clear backpacks. It's unnecessary, it's embarrassing for a lot of the students, and it makes them feel isolated and separated from the rest of American school culture, where they're having essentially their First Amendment rights infringed upon because they can't freely wear whatever backpack they want. So controlling your backpack abridges your First Amendment rights because the First Amendment applies to backpacks, but the Second Amendment does not apply to firearms. How does that work exactly? Wait, you say, why are you picking on David Hogg? He's only a kid. He shouldn't be held to adult standards of reasoning or be expected to think critically about the consequences of what he espouses. Well, yeah, exactly. He's a kid. He's just been through unspeakable tragedy. And that's why adults shouldn't be using him or his friends to push their agendas on the rest of us. We begin today with the update with regard to Fox News and Laura Ingram. So obviously over the last week, David Hogg launched a boycott. He's a Parkland survivor and he launched a boycott against Laura Ingram on Fox News because she said something that hurt his feelings about his college admissions. And finally, Fox News came out and defended their host, which is great. They should be doing this. So in a statement, Fox News co-president Jack Abernathy wrote, quote, we cannot and will not allow voices to be censored by agenda-driven intimidation efforts. We look forward to having Laura Ingram back hosting her program next Monday when she returns from spring vacation with her children. Good for Fox. The reality is advertisers will come back to Laura's show. Not that many advertisers dropped her show in the first place, and it wasn't her biggest advertisers that dropped her show to start. But it's pretty amazing that they had gone this far in the first place. On Saturday, as we played yesterday, David Hogg appeared on CNN and called Ingram a bully after attempting to destroy her business for suggesting that he was whiny about his college admissions. Pretty amazing, amazing sequence of events. But again, demonstrative, demonstrative of the fact that when it comes to the left's agenda, you know, reality and, and proportionality have nothing to do with anything. Now, speaking of reality and proportionality, well, Laura Ingram's going to survive all of this. The media will get over it until the next time there's ginned up outrage and they decide to finish off some sort of conservative host. But speaking of proportionality and lack thereof, the students over at Parkland are very, very upset. The reason they are upset now is because one of the security measures that's being taken, uh, that's being taken into consideration now being implemented at Parkland, uh, at the Parkland School, at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School, is clear backpacks for the kids. And the kids are very, very upset about this. So they're all tweeting out all of this stuff about why the clear backpacks are so terrible. And there's certain irony to a lot of the gun control students suggesting their rights are being taken away because they have to carry around clear backpacks. So Lauren Hogg, who is David's brother, and also goes to the high school, she said, 
My new backpack is almost as transparent as the NRA's agenda. I feel so safe now. As much as I appreciate the effort, we as a country need to focus on the real issue instead of turning our schools into prisons. Hashtag clear backpacks, hashtag march for our lives. So one quick note here. You know, why is it that my rights have to be taken away? You're essentially turning my entire gun safe into a clear backpack and then cleaning it out because something bad happened that has nothing to do with me or my gun ownership. Sarah Chadwick is another student over there. She says, tomorrow we will have to go through security checkpoints and be given clear backpacks. My school is starting to feel like a prison. Well, your school a few moments ago was a shooting gallery for an evil human being. So it seems to me that if you are suggesting that hundreds of millions of Americans be deprived of their firearms, this is a better solution. I don't think it's a great solution by any stretch of the imagination, but the, the outsized outrage about having to carry around a clear backpack you don't have a right to a backpack that is non-transparent in school. Do I think this is a great idea, by the way? No. Do I think this is going to do anything? No. Do I think this is moral panic and, and overblown? Absolutely. Do I think, however, that it is less intrusive of American rights for you to carry a clear backpack to a high school where you have no actual right to privacy? Or do I think it's more of an intrusion on rights for you to remove full-scale Second Amendment rights? I'm going to go the latter. Delaney Tarr is another student over there, and she tweets out, starting off the last quarter of senior year right with a good old violation of privacy. Again. If you're going to complain about violations of privacy in the same sentence where you suggest that the government should come into my house and remove my rifle, there's a bit of irony there. That's all I'm suggesting. Lex Michael, another student there. Interestingly enough, when I requested more government regulation, I said on guns, not on my backpacks. Thanks for trying to speak for me, though. So again, quick question. You don't have a right to your backpack. You don't have a right to a non-transparent backpack. And I, as I say once again, do I think this is a smart security idea? No, I think it's a pretty stupid security idea. I think that the, the idea that you're going to be able to view everything through a transparent backpack is not even true. You can always hide a gun behind a book or inside a book if you wanted to, presumably. But the, the basic logic that's being pushed here is that rights are being violated when high school students don't have a right to privacy in their backpacks. But no rights are being violated when they call for a vast removal of protected weaponry under the Second Amendment from a bunch of strangers who have done nothing to actually create all of this problem. It's, it's just an amazing thing. It didn't stop there. There are even more of these. Uh, Jacqueline Corn wrote, thousands of clear backpacks were donated to MSD. It's a shame because they should have been given to a school that actually needs the supplies. But since, we're give it, but since we're stuck with them, I decided to make the most of the situation and decorate. Okay, well, good for you. So you put March for a Live on your backpack. It's, it's just the lack of proportionality here is, is, completely, is, is completely incredible. John Barnett, another student, said, if our school board seriously believes that clear backpacks will be a key factor in keeping students safe, then every elementary, middle, and high school student, student should have one. School shootings can happen anywhere, so why are we only getting these backpacks? We need real change. Okay, this, I think, is my favorite tweet. This is my favorite tweet because the suggestion now is that if clear backpacks were to make a school safe, then everybody should have one. Well, that's pretty much what we're saying about law-abiding citizens and guns. Right? We think that law-abiding citizens ought to have guns to keep schools safe, and therefore, pretty much everybody should have one. So the logic completely escapes them. They make the argument with regard to clear backpacks, but not with regard to...